see you there. Today's lesson, we're going to examine the song Doing the Wrong Thing, and that's a song from my second album called Legs to Make Us Longer. Here's the tune. So let's start with the tuning. Um, by the way, this one's for the electric guitar players. Um, obviously, I've mainly played acoustic guitar over the years, but I've certainly done my share of playing electric, and this is a great song um, to start on. So it shows that you can still do a lot of interesting finger style work on the electric guitar and have it sound really nice. So the tuning, um, we're going to start with our E, and then the um, next string is going to be a G, then D. F sharp, B, and then this top string is also an F sharp, which means that it has to go a whole step above the E. And sometimes that can lead to strings breaking. So I really encourage you, if you're playing this on an acoustic, to make sure your string can go up there. If you're not playing light strings, I might try to put a 12 on, if you can, 12 gauge uh, string. And um, on the electric as well, if your strings are really heavy gauge, it's, it's you know not a certain fact that you may break it, but it's it can happen. Um, it's you're putting a lot of pressure on that string, so I would encourage you to play with light strings when tuning up to that F sharp. Um, this is a song off of Legs to Make Us Longer, which was an album I did for Epic Records in 2004. And uh, to tell you the truth, I was um, I was doing the wrong thing. Uh, it, with uh, some romantic entanglement that I will not get into detail about, but um, but it was painful, and I think there's some uh, some of that reflected in this tune. Also, um, at the time of writing this song and really sort of putting it together, I was I was on a very very long flight to Brazil, and perhaps some of the wrong things happened on that very flight. So that's all you need to know. Did the cat take a shit in the box? It smells disgusting. Do you want to just close the bathroom door so we don't die? All right. So what I want to focus on is playing this altered tuning on an electric guitar and specifically what we're going to be doing with the finger picking. So this is a, this is a pattern that I've played over the years. We're really just going to focus on that. So let's look at this right hand. So I'm going to break that down for you. And what's interesting is we can use this finger picking pattern to, you know, essentially the right hand's going to stay the same for that for that in that pattern and we're going to move these chords around to have a really really full sound um, where we have, you know, we have a rhythm, we have a melody, we have a harmony, we kind of have everything going because of this, you know, fairly basic finger picking pattern. So we've got um, the E, and again, I always refer to the strings in their standard tuning names as opposed to the names that we've tuned them to. So I'm going to call this the top E string and this the D string. And those I'm going to play with my ring finger on the E string and my thumb on the D string together. Followed by my index finger on the G string, pluck, and my middle finger on the B string. So let's just do that. Together. So that's the first half. The second half. The second half is this. So thumb on the D. Ring finger on the E string index finger on the G. Let's just try that. Let's put those two together.
So, you know, practice that for a while, take it really, really slowly, work with a metronome, build your speed up, et cetera, et cetera. Um, because eventually what's gonna happen is, well, that sounds okay. We want it to get up to speed, so more like. plug for muscle memory here. So this is something that it's a lot easier to just do with your fingers and your brain than it is to really cognitively think about which step is happening one after the other after the other. So, you know, while it's important to go, okay, these fingers play together, followed by these two, it's a lot easier to just start extremely slowly and get your fingers accustomed to just playing it. And then as you build up speed, your muscles are going to suddenly be going, I know exactly what I'm doing. And eventually it'll be too quick for you to really think about each step. But you want to get to a place where that's happening despite yourself. You know, you know, obviously all information that your body is working is controlled in your brain, but somehow muscle memory is not, it, it doesn't seem to be part of the cognitive uh, critical thinking and rational part of your brain. It's something that's more like, you know, how do you explain how you walk? You don't really explain that, you just do. And I think that that's what you're trying to aim for with, with all guitar and all instruments, where your body is kind of working without you needing to focus on thinking, which will allow, fortunately, time to think about other things, like where are my fingers going next? Or what song do I want to play after this one? Or what am I going to have for dinner? You know, it's amazing how you can be doing something really complex with your brain and, sorry, you can be doing something really complex with your body and yet your mind seems free. When I'm playing guitar and I'm playing guitar well and playing a song that I know really well, it takes up enough brain function to, to allow the rest of my thoughts to, be, to come really clearly and easily. I think it's, the, I, I, it's part of why I really love playing guitar as much as possible because my brain is a bit scattered normally and it's sometimes hard for me to concentrate and yet when I play guitar it, it seems it's 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 almost like meditating and I'm I don't have room for all the to think all the things at once I, I have to think about one thought at a time so I find it really peaceful and hopefully that's something that you can gain in your playing at some point so I want to start moving chords around in the left hand so the first one we're gonna do we're just gonna have the um, middle finger on the fourth fret of the D string and the ring finger on the fourth fret of the e, high E string. We're gonna do that with the finger picking pattern. Then I want you to switch back to open. that would complete this whole opening phrase are this. So we've got <clears throat> the middle finger and the index finger on the D at the second fret and the high E at the first fret. Open again. So then we have the middle finger on the fourth fret of the A string, and then we have the index finger on the third fret of the B string. So basically, we're going to switch the chords in the middle of the measure, but the right hand is going to stay doing the exact same thing. So you can move these progressions all around the neck in this tuning. In fact, I'll uh, um, show you how I have actually plagiarized myself. Maybe you recognize this. That's a 
song called Yellow Cake, which is off of the album called uh, Every, Until We Felt Red, which followed this uh, particular song and album. So it is okay to rip people off as long as that person is yourself. Um, but again, no, it really just shows that this is a cool, it's a really beautiful finger picking pattern. It's a beautiful tuning. Um, it sounds great on electric guitar and you can really find, you know, figure out your own vibe on it. Once again, and it's time for Khaki's magic fun bag of tips and tricks. Let's see what tip we are going to get today that I will get to explain to you. No looking, no looking. Let's get a good one. Ah, fingernails. Okay, it is high time that I explained my crazy long fingernails to you, the audience. So, um, these are fake nails, and I go to a nail salon and have them put on. And there are several different ways you can get this done. Um, the most normal way is, let's say, let's talk about this hand with no nails. I would go in, they would attach a plastic, a very thin plastic nail that's very long. Um, they would attach that with super glue. I would then cut that to the length that I desired. And then they would take a, like a combination of acrylic powder and glue or um, acetone and some other sort of power that, that they would make a paste basically and build the nail up from there. So they have a foundation with my nail and this extension. So they start to um, paint it on or powder it on or put glue and then dip into the powder. I, I've done this around the world and I've seen so many different ways of doing it, but it's all kind of the same. You wanna build up layers. Now, um, so think of these as picks. If you're a person who likes the sound of really thin picks, then you want this to be a little bit thinner. Um, thinner ones will be a little more brittle. They might break a little bit easier. Um, so I like the sound of a thick pick. I like a lot of power. I like a lot of warmth. And so the, the, I like to get like a pretty good, and I'll kind of show you like a pretty, they're pretty thick, those nails. So that's what I request. And oftentimes that's not what nail technicians are trained to do. They're trained to make the nail look more natural. So you kind of have to say, no, this is for an instrument. And so I want this to be really thick. Um, so they will, um, they'll build this layer up and kind of almost, almost like a structure on top of your nail, and then they will file it down to smooth it off. But that's kind of, that's just half the job. Um, when you get home, and this is what I have to do, is I have to actually really, really attack the nail with, a, with another file so I can get underneath it. And the reason is because the, the, the strings um, of my guitar, my hand, they're gonna have, the, the nail is going to attack it in a different way. Um, so it may be that, you know, this angle on this side of the nail has to be a little bit smaller. Like we're talking about really, like we're talking about millimeters, maybe even smaller. So get some nail files and really go to town. Like go to, you know, once you've got the nails on at the salon, some people will come home and think, oh, cool, I'm, I'm playing with these fake nails and it sounds awful and you're snagging on things and it's a nightmare. So that'll really, you know, turn people off from that. So, you know, take, get, get some nail supplies, get some buffers, get some files and really see, you know, what you can do as far as shaping the nail to exactly what would feel best on the guitar. It is a totally long trial and error process, at least it was for me. And it's kind of a change in lifestyle. I mean, I don't, I don't go grabbing for plastic water bottles unless I'm really sure I have a good grip as far as this hand is concerned. Um, so, you know, there are some things that will be a little bit different, um, but as far as my career, these nails have changed everything. My first album was not made with false nails. I had just grown out my natural nails. My second album I had false nails on, and the, you can absolutely hear the difference. Um, the amount of power that I can get out of the guitar, the, uh, the sort of fearlessness I have with it, um, the strength, all of that derives from the fact that I wear these false nails. So. I highly recommend at least trying them once. If you don't like them, you can, you know, they'll grow out or you can pop them off. Um, but for me, it's made all the difference. And obviously with these techniques that I'm teaching, I integrate the nails into just about everything. So if it's something that interests you, please ask me more questions about it. I know people are very hesitant to get this done. It seems very, it seems very permanent or something that might get them funny looks, but I encourage you to, you know, I can help you walk through the process. So let me know if you have questions about that. 
And that was the uh, magic bag of fun tricks and tips. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you got something out of that. If you have any questions, uh, follow up with me at Khaki King, at Khaki King, which is my Twitter account, or Facebook, Instagram. My website has an email address. All of those things, um, you can find me and, and ask any questions that you may have or make any requests for future episodes. Um, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again. Have a good day.